Okay. There's Mindy. Here we go. So. One way to learn about early peoples is to study the artifacts they left behind. By comparing artifacts, researchers believe early people lived in parts of East Africa nearly 3.5 million years ago. Archaeologists believe that humans moved or migrated from East Africa to Europe and Asia thousands of years ago. Archaeologists found a variety of human-made objects near Clovis, New Mexico. Remember, Clovis is a city. It's a place. They found a lot of human-made objects. And another word for that, remember, is artifacts. So they found a variety of human-made objects near Clovis, New Mexico. The arrowheads, hammer stones, bones, bone tools, and scrapers were estimated to be about 11,000 years old. 11,000 years ago, the earth was still in an ice age. Huge sheets of ice called glaciers covered great stretches of land. When the glaciers retreated, temperatures rose. Vast expanses of land became available for plant growth and animal grazing. Okay, so remember, these glaciers are the huge sheets of ice, the huge big blocks of ice. Those are glaciers. And during the Ice Age, they covered great big stretches of land. Okay, and he wants to learn about glaciers too. All right, see, this is what she does. She likes to sit right in front of what I'm doing because I'm not giving her attention. All right. And so remember, archaeologists, they thought that the people at Clovis were the first Americans, okay? Because they were like, wow, these people were living when there were still huge glaciers around, when it was still in the Ice Age. That is crazy. That's a long time ago. And... We have big winter coats and heating and all sorts of things. And they didn't have any of that stuff. And somehow they were still living way back then. But we'll find out. They might not have actually been the first. There might have been people even before that. We'll see. The discovery of human-made objects near Clovis challenged archaeologists to explain how early people made their way to what is now New Mexico. They discovered that during parts of the Ice Age, the sea levels were lower than they are today. When the seas were lower, a large area of land called Beringia stretched from Asia to North America and formed a land bridge. Animals from either side were able to migrate. Remember, that means move between Asia and the Americas. Hunters also could cross the bridge to follow the animals they hunted for food. So that is what we went over looking at that picture earlier on in the vocabulary, okay? Archaeologists then came up with the following explanation. Bands or small groups of hunters left Asia 11,500 years ago and moved across Beringia to what we now call Alaska. They then moved between two immense glaciers, two big blocks of ice, and made their way to the Americas. So first, the land bridge had to happen. Before they can cross it, the land bridge had to be there, right? So this is important to remember, the steps of what happened. So number one, first, the land bridge happened. And it makes sense. They couldn't swim across. They needed the bridge. The land bridge happened so they could walk across. Remember, it wasn't a real bridge, but I'm just drawing that for um, remembrance sake. Help us remember. Then... 
animals and people migrated or moved across to the Americas. And they did that by using the land bridge. Okay. Then after that, only like 60 or 70 years ago, oops, there we go. So the, first the land bridge, then they traveled across it, and then they were living their life, and they left behind artifacts. And once, and then, <clears throat> okay, so they left their artifacts. And then after all of that, that's when the Ice Age finally ends. Because remember, they were living, they were doing all this when there were still huge sheets of ice everywhere. It was still the Ice Age. So knowing this little sequence of events will be important. Hint, hint. All right. All right. So, like we talked about before, for years, scholars believed that the first Americans were the Clovis people of 11,000 years ago. But then, about 20 years ago, Archaeologists made a discovery at a site near Mount Verde, Chile, in South America. So this is another city. Now we're in South America and we're even further down. They found artifacts from a band of hunter-gatherers dating to 12,500 years ago. This meant that the first Americans entered North America a thousand years before scientists thought they did. Okay, come on, Andy. All right. So, the Clovis people, it doesn't look like they were the first Americans. Because now there's artifacts from Mount Verde that are even older. They then went back and did more digging. So the archaeologists went back to work, more digging, and found even older artifacts that could have been over 18,000 years ago. Wow. So we don't know who the first ones were, but probably not the Clovis people. We used to think that they were, but then we found more evidence, more artifacts from Mount Verde, Chile, and... Um, and just in other excavation site places, okay? During the Stone Age, humans relied primarily on stone tools. Okay, so this is pretty intuitive. It makes sense, right? During the Stone Age, humans relied primarily on stone tools. It's a good way to remember it. In certain regions... Humans also made weapons and tools out of wood, bone, or antlers. The Stone Age covers a vast amount of time, and it is divided into two periods. The larger period was called the Old Stone Age. Although it lasted a long time, little progress was made. Technology, or the way humans produce the items they use improved at a slow rate 
okay? So it lasted a long time, but they weren't doing much. They were still just using their stone tools. During the old stone age, humans relied on pebble or stone tools as well as hand axes, as well as hand axes. As the stone age progressed, humans began to use wood, bone, horn, and antler tools. So they started out with just stone and then they advanced to these other things. So now we're going to move on to the New Stone Age, okay? The New Stone Age lasted only about, hold on one moment. All right, so I had to plug in my phone so it doesn't die on us. The New Stone Age lasted only about 5,000 years. During the New Stone Age, Humans made great improvements in technology in a shorter time span. So it was shorter, but they still did a lot more. The beginning of the Stone Age used new techniques in stoneworking and polished rock tools were used. So they still are using stone and rock. But now they're making them nice and polished. They're, and, and they're more advanced. They're better. When the glaciers retreated at the end of the Ice Age, humans began to experience, experiment with growing wild plants as food crops. At the same time, humans began to domesticate or tame wild animals okay so domesticate means tame so they are domesticating the animals they were keeping them in one area with them so they could use them the new stone age ended when humans discovered metals from archaeologist studies we know that grains like wheat, rice, and barley were among the first plants domesticated. Plant remains and tools of domesticating crops can be found at an excavation site where archaeologists dig up artifacts. Plants were grown for food and for practical use. So maybe like weaving a basket or something. About 10,000 years ago, humans realized animals could be useful to them. They began to domesticate or tame dogs, goats, cattle, and sheep. Now, they say dogs here, but they're not domesticating them for pets. That's not why they domesticated them. They domesticated them to use them for certain things, to use animals for meat, to use them to get their skin and fur for clothing or to make a shelter to use their bones to make weapons okay so it's not pets it's to use them sheep and goats were among the first to be domesticated people realized these animals could be kept to produce milk and wool wool like a wool sweater it keeps you nice and warm these byproducts, so it's not the meat of the animal, it's the other products that they can produce. These byproducts could then be sold. Cattle provided meat for food and skin for clothing and shelter. Animals were also used to plow fields. In this way, Cattle made a great contribution to the development of agriculture or the raising of plants and animals for human use.
one family could now raise more crops than they needed and sell the surplus or extra supply. So now that they had animals and plants right there and they didn't have to go out looking for them every day, they didn't have to make as much. They didn't have to always be out hunting and always be out gathering. So, and if they did do that, then they'd have the surplus. They'd have that extra supply. So then they'd be able to sell it. So it made their lives a lot easier. Very important. The domestication of animals developed over time. People soon realized that animals could meet many of their needs. Early domesticated horses provided meat and skin. So at first, they were just using horses for meat. But what we know now is, well, you know, you can use a horse for a lot of other things, like for transportation, for moving around. So later, they were used for transportation, for nomads, or people who travel from place to place. Donkeys and camels provided another way to move both people and goods. These animals helped people travel long distances. So if they had a long ways to go, they might get a donkey or camel or horse to help them out. Along with farming and the domestication of animals came village life. People used tools made from stone, beech pebbles, and bone. They raised sheep and cattle. They also farmed. Farmers and herders, the village's food producers, raised surplus food. Because of the surplus, the village could divide up the work, forming social divisions. The word I like to remember social divisions with is just jobs. Okay? So, there's like a three-step process that happened here. So, first, animals were domesticated. or tamed. Then if you remember after that, because they were domesticated, they had a surplus that they could sell. Surplus means extra. And they could sell it. Then, because of this surplus, so for a while they were probably just all still farming, all still raising their own animals, all planting the same crops. And then they all had so much, they all had this extra amount. And they were like, okay, well, what are we going to do with all of this stuff? Like, we don't need all of this. We're wasting stuff. We don't want to waste stuff. And it's a lot of work. They're doing all this work to farm it, and then nobody's using it. So then what they decided to do was have social divisions or jobs. So say that me, Miss Eggleston, and Miss Reese, say we're all prehistoric people. We're living out here. Once social divisions happen, once these jobs happen, we can say, okay, I will plant the crops. I'll plant crops. And then this person says, I will hunt. Or, well, no, I will raise the animals. I will raise the animals. And then this person, didn't make enough space for this. This person says, I will make weapons. Okay? So now they all have jobs. And 
before that, each one of them all had to, they, this person had to make their own weapons, they had to raise their own animals, they had to plant their own crops. Same thing with this person. Same thing with this person. Once social divisions happen or jobs, they don't have to do that. And if you think of math, division, you're breaking it up into different parts. In social, think social media, you're talking with people. So the people were broken up. They're broken up into jobs. So they didn't have to do all of the work. First animals were domesticated. Because of that, that led to this. They wouldn't have had the surplus if it wasn't for the animals being domesticated. Animals were domesticated, it led to having a surplus, which led to them having jobs or social divisions. Okay. So you don't get confused. I'm gonna cover that. All right. So now, and here's a different example other than mine. A tool maker could make tools in exchange for food. Farmers could exchange surplus crops for meat or sheepskin. This change of lifestyle from hunting and gathering to farming led people to a new stage of development. So to add on to like the little picture that I made, they each decided to do these jobs because then they were all going to share with each other. They were going to trade or exchange what they did. This person made crop, crop planted the crops. So then when they, ha when they harvested them, they would give some to these guys. These guys would give them some of the animal products and weapons that they did. Okay. Archaeologists have made other discoveries that tell us about people living in the New Stone Age. Some tell us how people lived in different climates or the average weather conditions of places over a long span of time. In 1991, tourists found the body of a man. By looking at the tools and other artifacts he was found with, archaeologists could estimate the man lived during or after the New Stone Age. They knew this from the copper blade in the man's axe. Archaeologists have learned that copper was widely used during the New Stone Age. Scientists also use carbon dating to determine the age of artifacts. Okay. Culture. This is an important term. We do this in global scholars, in social studies. It's a good thing to know. Culture includes the technology, customs, beliefs, and art of a group of people. So technology, customs, or everyday things, beliefs, and art of a group of people. Sometimes culture can be described as the way in which a group of people People, oops, I misread that, my bad. Sometimes culture can be described as the way in which individuals and groups react to their environment. Physical features of earth, such as plants and landforms, encouraged the development of culture. A landform is a feature, is a surface feature, such as a valley, plain, hill, or mountain. And a land form is just a form of land. Surface feature. Hill, plain, mountain, valley. During the late Stone Age, during the late Stone Age, or the end of the new Stone Age, there were several diverse or different people living in the Americas. Each diverse group had its own developing culture. Each of these cultures relied on the resources available to them. Small bands of people came together to form villages only after they had learned to grow crops. 
Corn, beans, and squash became the most important crops. In Europe, the variety of different landforms, climates, and soil. Sorry. In Europe, the variety of different landforms, climates, and soil produced many different cultures. Once farming was established, gradual settlements followed. So they started developing little communities. Cultures increased their use of available resources. Which then also goes back and connects cultures. So it's like a little cycle. So, a way to, let's think of some examples of this. Yeah, let's think of some examples of this. So, if I live up in the mountains, here's the mountains, and I live up here. Do you think that I am going to be able to go fishing? Probably not, right? I have to use the resources that are available to me up in the mountains. And that's going to affect the technology that I have, how I make things, what I do on an everyday basis, and the type of art that I create. So where I live, my climate, the weather, and the geography of where I live affects what I do. It affects my culture. If I live by the ocean, by some water, I might go fishing. I might eat a lot of fish. And I might be a good boater. So I'm using what's around me. I'm using my environment to... It's impacting my culture. If I live in the desert... And there's, there's not very many things around. Here's like a cactus. Here's like a little plant. There's not very much in the desert, right? Very hot, dry. Maybe I use some of these plants to weave a little basket. I use what I have to survive. And so I use my climate... In landforms, which is like my geography, that impacts my culture. And then when I figure that out and I have more resources, then my culture is going to be impacted further. Okay. <clears throat> The picture we have of the many Stone Age European culture rests primarily on the technology and other artifacts these cultures left behind. At most prehistoric sites, archaeologists piece together the puzzle of a culture by using only a culture's tools and discards or throwaways. So all we can do as archaeologists is try to figure out what, what we can from what they've thrown out. Basically, they're garbage. And so it's pretty amazing to think about how much we've learned by studying these artifacts. Because really, it's just like what they left behind. They didn't want. A wealth of information can be found in pictures drawn by prehistoric people themselves. Archaeologists have discovered rocks engraved with human figures, horses, birds, and wild cattle. Prehistoric cave paintings can be found mostly in Spain and France. At Lascaux, cave art is protected deep in the ground from the damp climate. The paintings, drawings, and engravings on the walls, on the walls and ceiling give us ceiling give us a valuable view of the prehistoric world the paintings show the artists lived with hunt and hunted horses bison mammoth 
deer, and occasionally panthers and rhinoceroses. The colors they used were all ground from nearby rocks and stone. The paints were made by mixing the ground rock with saliva or animal fat. The paints were applied with their fingers or simple brushes. Even the caves themselves offer important information. From the cave paintings, it seems as the caves served as places for spiritual and hunting rites. Over time, different humans visited the caves and added to the paintings for thousands of years. Okay? So, now we're done with that. And now, the last thing, this is really, really important that you do for your study. I, this is literally the test. See how it says prehistory unit test part two? This is literally the test. See these three questions here that you went over with Miss Eggleston? What could cause groups of people living in different regions to develop differently? Look what it says here. What could cause groups of people living in different regions to develop differently? They're the same exact questions. So you already have three questions that are on the test. So you should 100% get a 100% on these three questions. This is a big part of the test, the short answer. And you already know what they're going to be. So what I would suggest, if it was me, I would practice writing out my answer and then I would really try to like read it, let it sink into my mind, kind of whisper it to myself. And then I would cover it up and I would write it again somewhere else and see if I remember all of those points. Okay, let's go over them. What could cause groups of people living in different regions to develop differently? This is all about this little picture that I drew. This little picture that I drew is kind of important. This is what, what I've been talking about. There's multiple choice questions on this, and you have this short answer. All right? So, groups of people depended on the resources that they had. So, this guy up in the mountains, he depended on the resources, the stuff that he had around him in the mountains. This person depended on the resources by the water. This person depended on the resources of the desert. So groups depended on the resources available to them. Different resources such as climate, the weather that they have, landforms. Do they live in a valley, in a, on a mountain, on a plain where they can farm? Plants and animals. Okay, so all of these are examples of animal. Or uh, sorry, all of these are examples of resources. Different resources such as climate, landforms, plants, and animals would cause them to develop differently. Okay, how did tools change during the Stone Age? All right, we talked about this. People in the old Stone Age, they used stone, right? So 
so mainly stone and sometimes bone and antlers, right? To make tools. In the New Stone Age, the people improved technology, right? They got better. So instead of those rough stone jewels, they have the nice polished rock. So they improve technology in stone working. So it's not that they weren't still using stone and rock. They were just making them way better. All right. Last question. Do people today use domesticated animals in the same ways as people in the Stone Age? Explain. Hmm. Well, let's think about it. Do we still have domesticated animals? Yes, right? We still have farms. We still use animals for food and milk and sometimes for skin, like leather and like leather um, clothes or couches or in, in your seats in the car. Sometimes it's like fake leather, but if it's real leather, then that means that it comes from animal skin. Okay. So we do still use animals for those purposes. We do still have domesticated animals. However, we don't use them to trans as transportation as much, right? And we don't really use them to like plow the fields, right? Because now our technology has advanced. We don't need those animals anymore to do those things because now we have cars, we have buses, we have um, tractors for plowing the fields when we're farming, okay? So we still use them, but it's different. So let's just explain that. So we still use domesticated animals Wool and skin. However, we don't use animals. That doesn't mean we can't go ride a horse, right? And but we don't use the horse usually to go from one place to a far away place. We would use a plane, a car, bus, train. Okay, so let's just read this one back. So we still use domesticated animals for food, milk, wool and skin. However, we don't use animals as transportation or for farming as much. All right. So practice these, get these down pat, know what you're going to say. It doesn't have to be the same wording as mine. You don't have to memorize this, but know your key points for each of them. All right. And if you want additional practice, I would suggest you know, you can re-watch parts of this video. You can take notes, draw some pictures like I did. That That's what helps me learn. Um, if you want to make some flashcards, if you want to just re-watch the video, if you want to re-watch the other videos that I made for our lessons during this unit, all of those things would be good study ideas. 
Another thing you can do is you can look up some Quizlets. I think Miss Eggleston might even have one in your Schoology for this unit. I think she does. So best of luck and I will see you tomorrow. I'm sure you'll do great. Bye-bye.